So the next thing we're going to be looking at is projectile motion. And so what is projectile motion? Projectile motion is pretty much in the same format of we throw something, um, shoot it out of a cannon at a certain angle of theta, and it's at initial speed v naught. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to, and then they, and they say it goes along this path and it falls down at this certain point here. The first thing we want to do is we want to break this up. Okay? Uh, we need to say that v naught, uh, if v naught is going in a upward direction and also a horizontal direction. Um, so what would v naught here be in terms of sine? Well, v naught would be v naught sine theta and v naught cosine theta. This is something you need to remember, but we can also see why that's the case. So sine theta in a typical triangle, sine theta is, let's call this op opposite, um, and we'll call this adjacent, and we'll call this hypotenuse. So sine equals O over H, opposite over hypotenuse, all right? Um, so if we did it like this, sine theta would be V naught times, and then um, the opposite over the hypotenuse with this V naught. So we can see that it would still be just the hypotenuse which is going up, or the, sorry, the um, opposite going up. So we can see that that makes sense. We don't really have to memorize it, but just know that this is V naught sine theta. Okay, um, so we need to break this up into two parts. So we need to say that um, this right here is it goes up and it goes down, and then the other one is just it goes straight horizontal. Um, so that's good to remember that uh, this will always be v naught cosine theta, and this will be v naught sine theta. All right, so you can't ever um, manipulate this projectile motion problem um, just by looking at it. You have to be able to split it up in two. And so things that I want to note are, um, so if we have this right here, at the max height, so let's say this says point B, B is the max height, it's also when T equals one half of the total time. All right? So at this point, at the max height, it has an equal amount on both sides, a time equal on both sides. Um, also what I want to note is that this V naught is going to be the same as that initial V naught but in that direction um, and typically the same rules apply um, if we have it going up in the air like this on its way back down it'll be going V naught sine theta in the same direction and also horizontally it is a constant speed okay, so V naught cosine theta is constant throughout the horizontal. Um, so now, let's just see what type of questions could they possibly ask. So the, the typical questions that they can ask um, is how far does the projectile land, how high does it get, and the time it takes. Um, and so the one thing that we need to know is that projectile motion is no different from any other type of uh, free fall problems or uniform acceleration motion. They're all the same. Okay? We just are presenting it in a different way. So this question says, a cannon is shot at 30 degrees uh, with an initial speed of 20 meters per second. How far away from the cannon does it land? All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna draw a picture. So we have, it goes up at 30 degrees, an initial speed of 20. All right, how far away from the cannon does it land? So we wanna find the distance between where it falls. So say it goes all the way over here and it falls, we want to find this distance right here, all right? So how do we solve this? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out um, what exactly will we use to solve this. So we, if we have this, the speed going horizontally, we know that this would be 20 cosine 30, which is the horizontal speed. So um, we know that's 20 cosine 30, um, so we know this is 20 times square root 3 over 2, all right? So 10 square root 3. So we know this is the, the, the speed horizontally. Um, and if we had the time, all we would have to do is 10 square root 3 times the time. Um, and since this is in meters per second and this is in seconds, this will give us the total distance, how far the, the ball traveled, 
Okay, so all we need is this total time. We just need to find the total time that this thing traveled. Okay, so we can just divide this up vertically. So we say that this object is going up and coming straight back down. So we just need to find um, if we just took this same object that we were throwing um, at, a, at an angle, now we just throw it up and go back down. Um, and we know that this initial speed is v naught sine 30, right? Because we know that um, if we split this up, we have a vertical and a horizontal uh, component to it. So if that's the case, we know that v naught sine 30 um, will be um, 20, so 20 times sine of 30, which is 1 half. So this is 10. So v naught equals um, 10. And this is in the vertical direction, so let's just call this v naught y is 10. Okay, so we also have a couple other pieces of information. We know a y equals negative 10. Um, and we also know that uh, v not v final y equals zero because at this top point, um, at this top point right here, v final is going to be zero. All right? And what do we want to know? We want to know time. So let's try to figure that out. So we knew that v not v not y is ten. We know a y equals negative ten, um, and we know v final y equals zero. And time is what we wanted to find out. Okay, so we go back to our equation sheet, and we were not given um, distance, so we we're going to use this equation right here: v equals v naught plus a t. Okay, so our v is zero, v naught is ten, a is negative ten, and t is well. That's what we want to find out. Um, so from this, we find that t equals 1. Okay? So t equals 1, what does that exactly tell us? That means to get from the very bottom um, to the top, so to get from here to here, it took us 1 second. But that's not the total time, that just got us to this max height right here. It took us 1 second to get there. That means to get all the way to the bottom back again, it's going to take us 2 seconds. It's going to take us twice the time. So all we found here was the, the, the halfway point, because we said v final equals zero, right? If we said v final is zero, then that's how we got that. Um, if we were to make v final um, negative 10, that would have solved it as well, but this was simpler to me. Um, and so what do we do now? So we know now that it took two seconds to get there, so all we have to do is plug it back into here. So we said our v x was 10 square root 3. Our horizontal velocity was always 10 square root 3 because it was um, 20 times cosine 30 and 20 was our initial speed. Um, so all we have to do to find d is vx times t and t is the total time so 10 square root 3 times 2. So we know our total distance traveled is 20 square root 3.